Okay with a BA in business administration. And um, she's a member of a lot of um, organizations, amongst which is um, the United Nations War and World Trade Organization. And um, she's also a mentor with the Silicon Valley based Funder Institute. And she is an ISO 9001 qualified. She is also a mentor under a mentor her program, which is a mentoring program under the WTEC, um, where we um, peer mentors and mentees together. The, mentor, the mentees are undergraduates in the university STEM undergraduate. We peer them with mentees who are STEM professionals. They take them through training, mentoring, guide and all that for the span of um, six months. So um, without wasting much of our time, I would I will call on to Omar Clark, who will be taking up the discussion from here. Omar, are you there? I'm here, can you hear me? Oh, welcome, yes, I can hear you clearly. Thank you and um, welcome to today's program. Fantastic, so, fantastic. So um, I will be handing over to you to take up the pattern. Thank you. I hope, hello everybody. If you guys can hear me, just let me know. Hi, I can hear you. I don't know if others okay. can. Okay, is everybody else yes. can hear me? You can all hear yeah. me, okay, fantastic. Yeah. I'm trying to, um, sorry, I'm not going to use my video today. I do apologize. I plan to use it, but um, <laughs> I'm not very well at the moment. So I'm doing this while sick. So you guys pray for me. Um, so mm. let's get started. Let's get started. Is the first screen on there? I'm trying to log in with a different machine so I can see. Okay, the I'll screen is here. I'm going to be sharing the screen, screen very soon. So before she starts, I would like to please uh, urge you to drop in your questions in case you have any question while she's speaking, drop That's it in the nice. chat room. If not, you can wait till after she has finished presenting and then you can ask your questions. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. I'll start sharing the screen now. Okay. Okay, great stuff. So basically today, I've got half an hour, so I will try and keep within half an hour. So like you guys can, uh, as she said, drop your questions in the chat, yeah, or, um, uh, <laughs> thank you, somebody said quick recovery. Drop your questions in the chat or at the end of it, then you can ask and then uh, we'll take it from there, okay. So basically we're talking about career paths in software development, I know like, Everybody, we've all heard about software development. Um, you know, I mean, everybody has different ideas about what software development is. You know, um, and can we? Can, can you? Can can you put it? Move to the next slide. Yes. yes. Okay. Great stuff. Right, okay, so I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, ourselves, who we are, what we do. Um, in iBase, we're a technology consulting company. We do, uh, we specialize in websites, in web develop, web and software development, and then training as well. So uh, what we offer is custom software services and products to entrepreneurs, to organizations, to businesses. And we're also passionate about training, about closing the uh, software divide, so we, we are keen on that and we, we do that as well. Next slide, please. Okay, so just a background. As you guys know, software development, software development was actually, um, has been booming for some time. It's been coming up, a lot of people do software development, but recently with COVID-19, social distancing, lockdowns, demand has accelerated for us particularly, even as a business, as a software company. Last year, all through the lockdown, we were busy working, working, working. More work than we could handle as a small company. So, you know, it's actually quite a lucrative area to 
go into these days. Practically every company, no matter the size, you know, they, they want to be online. They want some sort of website, database, mobile app, uh, business application, something to help them do their business, to, to sell their products or services, interact with clients and all that. So um, it's actually quite an interesting time to be in software development. Now, the thing is, all of these websites, um, databases, mobile apps, software applications, they all need, need to be built by somebody. They all need to be maintained by, by somebody. And the people that do that are called software developers. Um, so hence we're talking about the various careers. Now, I think software development is one of these very misunderstood terms, yeah? Can you guys drop for me in the chat box what you understand by uh, uh, software development? Because people, different people have different meaning, uh, different ideas of what it might be. Can somebody, just really quickly, we don't have a lot of time. If you drop in the chat box what your understanding is, then we can have a little bit of discussion about that. Then we move. Okay, somebody said building apps. Okay, anybody else? Maintaining apps. Okay, anybody? Anybody else? Okay, building apps, maintaining apps. I saw that. Um, building software. What does building software mean, though? You know. Um, Okay. Invention of application. Okay. What does that mean in English? Software creation of website and creating a solution. Okay. So you see, so different people, even in this small group here, different people think software development mean different things, you know? So um, go to the next slide, please. Uh oh. So I'm going back to back to front, learning outcomes. I should have talked about before actually going to what is software development. Learning outcomes, I'm hoping at the end of this uh, session, 30 minute session, everybody on this thing would understand software development process. You were exposed to opportunities in the industry. Um, you know what kind of area, you know, there are two things. You can be an entrepreneur, you can go and work for somebody. So you know what kind of um, way you go and the career path is okay, the next slide which is like, what is software development? What is software development? We've all um, given our uh, uh, different ideas. So different people think software development is many things. A lot of people, when you tell them, when you ask what is software development, they just think it's about writing code, uh, i.e. programming, but it's a lot, lot more than that. Software development actually is a process. It's not a thing. It's not one thing, you know what I mean? It's um, it's a process for doing something. You start somewhere and then you go somewhere else. Can I go to the next slide, please? So software development is a set of activities, yeah, that you go to to produce um, a software application or a solution. It is structured problem solving with distinct activities and phases. We'll talk about that in a bit, yeah. And, uh, and it's a very creative process. So a lot of people, you ask them, they'll say, ah, software development, they are thinking of coding, they are thinking about mathematics, and they think it's just something that is out there, but it's actually not. It's actually more interesting than you think. Let's go to the next slide. So like, like I said, software development is a set of phases. You know, it's, it's uh, activities that you go through to produce software. So you start somewhere and you, and you end somewhere. You know, it's, a, it's, 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 it's actually got a finite life uh, lifespan. And at the end of it, you know what I mean? You develop something and you give to somebody else or you use it to do whatever you built it for. So that cycle that it goes through is called the software development life cycle. You know, it starts with, it kind of starts to kick off, you have to plan. Then it goes into requirements analysis. It goes to system, uh, you go through system design, you go through coding. Um, you go through coding, in which people call programming or people call software development. You go through testing and then you go through um, maintenance and so forth. Uh, now, all of these phases, yeah, so, so this is the thing. All of these phases can be done by one person. They are all distinct. They are all um, separate. They are all special, specialized in their own unique ways. Some of them overlap, obviously, you know, but they are all really distinct. And some of them actually require very, very distinct, um, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, skill sets, you know. So, and so we'll talk through all of that before I go. Each phase has needs different things and requires and has a different career path within it. So let's talk about all of that. So let's talk about all of that. Let's go to the next uh, slide. 
So what we'll do is, instead of just talking like, oh, you can be a coder, you can be a this, we'll look at all the phases because um, soft, software development is actually structured. You know, one thing most of the time leads to another. So we'll talk to what's involved in every stage and the kind of careers you can do in all of those stages. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, you can sort of see what is there. So the first stage we'll talk about will be the planning stage which is the first phase of the software development cycle if you're going using that sequential uh, 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 model. Now, planning, as we say, is about, you know, planning is the first thing you do. It's about planning all the activities you do to build a product. So for example, somebody says to you, I want to build a website, which is one of the most basic um, types of software. Um, I want to build a website. You don't just, <laughs> you should not actually, because some people do, you should not just go and start building. Because if you do that, you'll do rubbish. You know, first of all, you have to think, what kind of website does this person want? What do they want to use? You know, what, who will do it? Blah, blah, blah. So all of these, you know, you come into the planning phase. You take into consideration resources. You take into consideration the budget, you know, who will do it? What is the timeline that they want this done? So all of that is done in the planning phase. And the people that will most um, normally be involved with that will be like a project manager, can we go mainly a project manager? Can we go to the next slide? Thanks. It would be mainly a project manager, but uh, sometimes you'll have a technical lead, you know, how, depending on the organization or a business analyst that might be involved in that. Next slide. So a project manager, you know, is like a generalist. Project management is, whilst if you are working with a software application, obviously we would expect that you understand a little bit about software development or technology or IT, but it's actually quite a non-technical role. This person will be interfacing with um, the clients, the end users, and they'll be also talking to the technical team that will be building them, the website, managing them. You know, so it's, uh, it, it's in, in this, if you're a project manager, for example, you don't need to understand C++, you don't need to have hardcore technical skills, you know, so it's, it's, quite, it's quite soft in that sense, but you need to have an understanding. Let's move to the next, uh, the next slide. So then the next stage will be requirements gathering or feasibility. Now, requirements gathering is like um, understanding what the clients want, you know, for you to build a software that needs their, uh, meets their needs, you know, understanding the kind of product they want um, and it's actually very scientific. It's actually not something you can do. It takes skill to go in there, to sit with somebody, to actually drag out from them, even the things that sometimes you don't even realize because sometimes people are vague and they will say to you, oh, I just, somebody comes, can, comes and says, I want a database. Then you discover they want a full ERP uh, a solution, but you won't know that until you sit down with them and actually find out exactly what they want and the, the, so, so that's requirements gathering and then you analyze this and and you know capture whatever they want analyze it put it in a document which we'll call a business requirement document and the, the kinds of people that will be involved in um, in doing this really will be like a business analyst mainly uh, uh, can we go to the next slide thank you a business analysis is, um, is again, another non-technical role, but very essential. It's very key in the software development life cycle because if you do not get the requirements correctly, um, the, the impact of that is quite significant. Uh, so for example, if, another example, if somebody says, I want, I want people to be paying online, what does that mean in English? You, know, you need to actually be able to understand exactly what they mean and do that. So, Business analysis is quite crucial, but like I, like I said, it's, uh, it's non-technical. It's good for people that understand, that like data, uh, like talking to people, you know, uh, you know how to investigate, you know, you know how to drag information out, out of people, you know how to evaluate data, analyze data, you know, um, you, you like to work, you understand tech, but then again, you're not a hardcore techie person that goes and code system. These are the kinds of people that do business analysis. So um, business analysis, like I said, is one of the most important parts of software development, but it's non-technical. Um, can we go to the next slide? Thank you. Then after that, you have so we, uh, after that we have system design, which is the next phase. Again, uh, after you build it, after you've um, 
if somebody comes to you, oh, build me a system, whatever system, it, it might be a website, database, whatever it is, yeah? The first thing you do, you plan. So you need project managers or people that are skilled in uh, uh, planning to be able to see the full picture, the big picture, you know, this non-technical role. And then you need business analysts that will go out and actually talk to uh, the people that want the system and the people that will use the system to find out what they want the system to do, you know, to, how they want the system to function, how they want it to work, business analysts. Now, when they've done all of that, the system now needs to be designed, you know, and that's when we come to system them design again is another crucial aspect of software development uh, system design really it's about the architecture of the system yeah uh, there are two types of design you have the physical design of the system which is what you see then you have the logical design which is what you do not see you know it's how the system functions the rules um, all the functionality, all of this needs to be designed. So what a system architect will do is that, you know, they will take the FSD, look at what the, uh, what, um, the end user wants the system to do, how they want it to work, and they will translate all of this into, uh, into an architecture on paper. I think one of the, ex the, the closest example I can give, you guys have heard of an architect. If you want to build a house, you get an architect, the architect will go and look at the plot, they will draw the house, three bedroom house, this is bathroom, this is the bedroom, this is this. That's what a system design and designer does. So they will draw all of this out. What system does he need to interface with? And what kind of network does he need? Put all of this, you know, that's, this is now the, this is the logical part. The physical part is what you see, the UI, user interface, UX, you know, well, user, UX is user experience, well, user interface, what you see, what you can touch, the layout, what we do. So all of this, um, the system designer will do. Uh, can we go to the next slide? So a person that actually does this would be a system designer. There are various, various professions you can do in this actually. Um, you can be a graphic designer. Next slide. You can be a, you can be a graphic designer, like I said, that's a UI designer. You can do UX design. You can be a system analyst, a system architect. All of them do different things. All of this is within system design. Again, like I said, system design is very, very, uh, it's a very crucial part of software development as well. And one of the areas you can form your career in. I hope I am not going too fast. If I am, please do say. Then um, the next phase is coding, which people call programming or some people also call software development as well. Coding is, is just simply um, machine language, if you put it that way. It's translating um, your English language, what you've written down into machine readable language so that your computer can read it. And, and, and it does so using I, um, ones and zeros, you know, that's why it's digital, digits, you know. Um, and then, so think about it like, now I'm speaking to you in English but maybe somebody doesn't understand English, they understand Yoruba, so you want to translate what I've just spoken in English into Yoruba. So basically that's it, you know, just in the roundabout, um, uh, in, the, in the simple way, is translating what English into machine readable language. And there are many different languages, many, many, many different languages, depending on what you want to do. Depending on what you, what you want to do, there are so many different languages. And there are front-end uh, languages, you have back-end languages. And I think a lot of people, let's talk about front-end and back-end a, a little bit. A lot of people confuse, so they have a front-end developer and a back-end. Front-end simply means that you look at the visual, the interactive elements of, um, of, a, of an application or a website or, or they, whatever it is, it's what people can see and touch. Um, so, for example, website developers are front-end developers, you know, um, and if you are working on the back-end, say you are building a database, you are a back-end developer. If you are building core functionality, for example, using C++, C Sharp, you are a back-end person. A lot of people that do front-end cannot do back-end as well, you know, because they are different languages altogether. Front-end languages, as we've got on the screenshot there, HTML, CSS. Uh, JavaScript, jQuery, those are the ones you use to build websites, you know. Um, but the back end, we're talking about PHP, Python, you know, to build more complex applications. Um, so that's the difference between them. Some people say they are full stack coders, which means they do both, you know. It, it's possible to do that, but it's good to, I think most people will want to specialize in either front or back end, you, uh, and, and that's the thing. So if you're a coder, 
which i.e. you build code, you write code, you know, you write machine readable language, or you are a programmer, as people call it. There are different, different kind of things you can do. Can we go to the next slide? There are different things you can do. You can, you, a programmer, that's what we talk, you write code. You can be a website developer, which means you're front end. You can be a mobile app developer, which means um, you build mobile applications, you know. Uh, Android, iOS, uh, Windows, the like. You can be an application developer. Again, is the same thing. You might specialize. You know, some people are specialized in some particular languages and not others. You can say, I only use Ye, I only use uh, Laravel, you know, something. Front end developer, you build uh, front end stuff or like websites and that. You can be a database developer. So you are building hardcore databases using SQL. SQL um, uh, or, or MySQL or one of all these things. You can be a game developer. Be, you're building videos, you know, using AI, artificial intelligence and things like that. Um, Python, those kind of languages you're using. A full stack developer, I've just said, you'll do both. You can be a DevOps um, engineer. That's a new a new role. These are some of all these things, these roles, uh, they are just interchangeable. DevOps, you know, it just means you, you understand programming, but you talk a lot with the business people and you help them. Embedded systems is a little bit more complex, i.e. you're building analog and integrating with digital stuff and all that is very complex. Or you can be a cloud developer, you're just building virtual stuff, you know. So an organization like Facebook, for example, will have a lot, a lot of uh, people building, just building for, for, uh, for, 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 for virtually, that is it. So next slide. I just want to drop something for women in tech. A lot of people, this is the beat. Um, Coding or programming, which a lot of people associate with programming, is one of these bits where people always, um, you know, people are always scared. And a lot of women feel scared to go into software development specifically because they think it's mathematics, it's difficult, we can't do it, and all that. But it's not true. Um, code, this, <laughs> this was published last year in some magazine. I just thought I would include it here. Coding is gender neutral. Code does not know whether it was built by a man or a woman it is just code you know and 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 um, coding is not mathematics it's logic it's more logical so if you're a woman you should never ever be scared uh, of going of, of being a coder ever you know i think a lot of some of the best coders in the world from if i can remember correctly are women so you should never ever be scared of um, of building code let's go to the next slide So the next thing is testing, you know, after you've planned the project, you've done all your analysis to capture your user requirements, produce the business requirement document, um, a business analyst would, so project manager is overseeing the entire project, a business analyst is focused on like talking to the end users to capture their requirements, they've done that, it's gone into the BRD, which is the business requirements document, then they pass it on to the um, either systems analyst or software designer that will actually do the design, the architecture. You know, you could have front end, uh, front end type people, UI designers working on the front end to make it well, on the graphics and all that to make it look beautiful. Or you could have um, uh, also um, architects, software solutions architects working on the architecture to see how everything fits together, how many databases are needed, what kind of network will they use and all that. You know, when all of that is done, they create an, a functional spec document that they pass on to the coder, uh, the person that writes co uh, that, that will write the actual program, you know, uh, produce the source code. After they've done that, they've produced the initial source code, uh, which will possibly be like an initial prototype. It has to be tested, you know, so they'll pass it on to people that will do the testing. Good practice is um, a person that codes should never really test their own code because they can never see the mistakes in their own code. So if I write code, I always think it's perfect. You know, no matter, I will always, so you need somebody with an extra pair of, a pair of eyes that has forensic eyes that can come and actually look at this code to find all the defects or problems in it. So that is done in the testing, um, in the, in the testing phase. What, what the person that says normally will do is that they will take the business requirements document, which shows what the end user, your client actually wants. And then they will take the functional spec document that shows the design, the architecture. 
and, the, and then they would test against this to see whether the person that has coded captured the requirements and also captured the design. You know, that's why um, requirements is very important because, and then, you know, they will come up with um, whatever um, uh, findings that they find that they see in there. If you see coding, if, if the coding was incorrectly done, they will send it back to the coder and the coder will fix it. And then they will test again. There are different kinds of tests people do. UAT test, regression test, UAT test, which is user acceptance. But the first test you will do is a unit test. Uh, that's the coder will do that. Then it passed on to the, the uh, uh, what's it called? They'll pass on to the tester that will do it. Uh, uh, they'll do another test. They'll do a regression test. They'll do, we'll do various performance tests, security tests. Um, then before it goes out to the end user. Now, if the user requirements were not captured, it can be fixed. If the design was not captured, it can be fixed. But if the specification was incorrectly done, it means the coder will code wrong and the user will not get what they asked for. If the design was badly done, it can be fixed, but it means that the coder will, uh, will code wrong as well, you know? But then a good tester will be able to pick all of these things out, you know? Um, and go back. So that is testing is actually very important. It's one of the most important phases in the software development life cycle. Very important. Um, that's why a lot of people, especially in clients like us, I always hear people say that, oh, they didn't get what I wanted. So which means that either the business requirements was not captured properly or it wasn't tested properly. Because if you test, you will always find out that you find out whether you actually captured the, the user's requirement. And testing is also a very technical discipline. Um, it's a very, very technical discipline. It's most testers who understand coding to some degree. Whilst they might not be coding full applications, they will actually understand how to code. Um, and then because uh, testers normally, they will write like test scripts, you know, they do automated testing, which has to be coded as well. So they have understanding of code as well. Different kinds of job you can do in testing. You can just call yourself a plain old software tester. You are going in and finding defects um, in the application based on the BRD or the FRD. You can be a quality uh, analyst, quality assurance analyst, which um, is still you're still testing and finding defects, but you are also looking for compliance as well. Because if you're building like maybe complex applications like finance applications, you have to be complying with um, best practice, um, industry best, best practice, Maybe CBN says you have to have these standards. You have to make sure they are built into your application, and you and you know so you need a good QA person that can come and do that. Then um, test engineers is the same test analyst. So all of these all of these roles they do testing, but from company to company they will have different levels and varieties um, of of what they want done and what they want their people to do. Can we go to the next slide? Thank you. I don't know if your questions are coming, I'm just talking. Okay, so now, after you've done all of this, it's been tested, you've tested as many times and you have um, a program, an, applica an, app uh, an application that is uh, good to go, good to go to the next level. The next thing you do is you have to release it into live. Again, this needs to be done in a, systema a systematic manner. It's not just like, oh, I've done it, oh yeah, this is it, no, you know. It needs to be done um, in a systemic. So you have in big organizations or good organizations, you will have somebody that actually manages the release uh, process. You know, they will call them release managers. Um, the release process is also called go live. So you'll be like, are we going, we're going live, we're going into production or we are, we're rolling out to implementation and all that. So you have somebody that manages this process, but they don't just manage go live, you know. A release manager will manage even during the testing. So for example, a coder will code on their, either their own machine or a development environment in bigger companies. When you want to test it, you don't test in a, in a development environment. You need to put it in a, in a test machine. So a release manager is managing this process as well, working with the developer, you know, um, put it on a test machine and make sure that working with the testers as well, the testers will test here. When they find defects, it goes back to the development machine and then you know we'll go back forth, back forth until it's ready to go into production. So a release manager will manage all of this one. You know, um, In simple projects, it's just as simple as deploying the code onto a web server, then it goes live. But in large, large projects, you, know, you have to go through many systems and many stages. And again, like I said, the people that will do that will be 
a release manager, the kinds of jobs they'll do there is, um, you can call them, go to the next slide, a release man, you can call them a release manager, implementation manager, a project manager can also be in charge of that um, security engineer, because when you're thinking of going live now, you're also thinking about security because obviously with so many um, applications out there, uh, fraud as well, there's a lot of fraud. So you also, you also want to make sure that your system is secure. So you need a secure security person to be involved in all of that. So you have all of these people doing all of these things here. Release management again, whilst you are not a hardcore techie person that is writing code, you need to have good understanding of um, technology and appreciation of technology. You are involved more or less in most of the phases, maybe apart from, um, uh, from, from the coding stage, you start becoming involved right on, until when it goes live to the end user. So that's release management. Then when the thing is live in public, when, when, when the system is live in public, the next thing you need to do is maintain it. So you need people that are specialists and they understand how to maintain and support. So maintenance and support uh, after it's gone live, post implementation support is also quite huge and big because after you've built somebody a business application or a database or website, you know, you can't just leave it there things will go wrong, technology moves fast, you need to keep upgrading, uh, keep uh, making sure it's, um, uh, you always have the right version at every time. And you also want to make, uh, make sure all the time that the system is working perfectly. So you have specialized people that do this. Um, bigger companies will have in-house people that do application support or, uh, for them. Um, smaller companies might just have to um, outsource or uh, people to do this. Basically, what a, a support person is again between the business, between business and uh, uh, and technical. While you don't have to be a full time coder, a lot of application people, uh, support people, will understand how to write code at least to some degree, but maybe not hundred percent. Because what you're doing is you are bug fixing, you are uh, uh, maintaining the, the machine, you are um, fixing defects or problems, and a lot of support people also get involved in testing as well, you know, to understand the application. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's a semi-technical role for people that don't want to be hardcore techie, but they want to be involved somewhat, and they want to be involved in the business side. You know, application support is good for them because you sort of get your hands dirty, but not too dirty. The kinds of roles that you can do in application supports are. The kinds of roles you can do, you can be, you can be an information systems manager or application systems analyst or, or consultant or all of this. When I started work, my first job was an application support consultant. I was doing everything from talking to the end users, training people, and doing small, small coding here and there until you know I just graduated upwards like that. So it's a good place to start your career. A lot of application support people also go on to become project managers because you have an understanding of the end-to-end -end process and you know exactly what needs to be done at every single phase. So I hope I didn't talk too fast. I feel as if I've uh, talked for just two seconds, you know, just to conclude. You can see that uh, in software development, there are so many careers. I just sort of breezed through really and talked about some of them, not all of them. There are so, so, so many things you can do, so many options. Um, so many I've not even talked about. You are not restricted to coding at all. In fact, we normally say only, you can go to the next slide. We only say about 5% of the software development uh, 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 process is coding. So people that actually write code, go to the next slide. People that actually write code, you know, it's only like 5% of the software development work. The core of the work in software development is, do, is to do with requirements gathering, finding out exactly what, your, your, what, the, what whoever wants the software application you are building wants, you know, making sure you properly capture their requirements so that you can build for them exactly what they want. Otherwise you will build a system that is not fit for purpose. Um, and then uh, the other bit of it is to do with testing. You know, if you test properly, if the, if the coding was incorrect, you will find out everything that wasn't done properly and it can be fixed, you know, without, so that you can go to life. 
most software application projects all over the world fail because of incorrect requirements gathering and analysis and incorrect testing and to some small extent and design so those are some of the core areas so there are so 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 many things you can do um i've just put on there some of the areas you can specialize in i, I haven't talked about on this um, screen slide the things that i already mentioned you know i just talked about other areas change management change management is huge because if you are going to in say somebody for 30 years i had for example over the lockdown, I had a client that came to me. They, I mean, they've been in existence for over 20 years, but they do everything manually. Their turnover every year is over a billion naira. But when lockdown came uh, last year, uh, suddenly everything, business shot. They, they couldn't do anything, they couldn't work. Now they started, they, they decided to start. Um, uh, to start using digital, you know, start introducing technology. Now, for a company like that, that you have staff that have been working with you for 20 years, and now they want to go digital, it's very difficult to get people to change their mindset. So that's when change mind, uh, management comes in. You need specialized people that can go in and try and get buy-in and get people to start using technology, train people and all that. Information management, just managing the information in the organization using technology systems. You need people that have um, like they're almost like project managers you know to do that content management is huge i didn't talk about it too much only because it's not coding but content management is a huge area people are getting into data analysis data analytics very 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 big uh, uh, area every com you, you've all i think most people have heard about whatsapp and whatsapp collecting them um, data and everybody living whatsapp the truth is every company is a data collector <laughs> it just depends on how they use their data so some companies have been smart and they know how to um, manipulate that data to use it to get whatever it is they want so data analysis is a huge area and it will continue becoming uh, being huge data analytics and data science and all that um, product management you can imagine a project, I have Handy Jacks, um, an online platform, you know, now I need product managers that will focus and just manage the end to end operations or even if you want to build a new product, a new product a software application, we need people that know how to do things like that, you know, information architects, people that are like I talked about them um, design, you know, it goes there. search engine optimization now with everybody going online on the web, you need people that understand um, SEO search engine. You know, search engine, a lot of people is one of those things I, I like software development that somebody thinks is one thing, but really is something else. You know, uh, there's a huge technical element to SEO that you need people that actually know how to code to be able to do. Cyber security, huge. You need people that, that understand that. Um, forensic computer analysis, again, you need pe uh, analysts, you need people that know how to do all of that. And people that know how to sell technology, to sell technology, you need to understand technology. People that need to train, there's a huge gap in, uh, in, in, in Nigeria, but even all around the world as well, in Westernized society, we also find that. Um, there's a gap between a digital divide between people that understand technology and people that do not. There are two kinds of things. There are people that need technology to do their day-to-day -day work. There are people that need to do, use technology to do daily things, you know? People that need to go online now, can you imagine if they say, okay, everybody now start registering for your NIN online. How would somebody that is like 80 years old do that? You need people that know how to understand how to do that. So we need trainers. We also need people that need to train people on how to build technologies because to build technology is a skill. It's not just, you know, something you just do like that. And graphic, these are just some areas, you know, but um, there are more, these are just some highlights. So it's, it's, there's a huge wide area that people can go. Can we go into the next slide? So one of the things that people ask me a lot is what kind of qualities do I need to be a software developer? You know, people talk about mathematics. Now, there are so many things, you, you know, you need different skills depending on what you want to do. If you want to be somebody that is an, an analyst, obviously you need analytical skills, you need logical thinking skills, you know, you need problem solving skills, you need attention to detailed skills, you need to be methodical, you know, all those kind of skills. If you're doing front end stuff, you have to be really creative, you know, know how to do um, that RT type creative kind of things. You need to do that. If you're writing code, say you are a coder, um, and, and to some extent, if you are doing uh, testing kind of thing, but not really testing, if you are doing Q and you are writing code in that uh, aspect, you need some mathematics, but it doesn't mean that you have to be like, oh, I have to be scoring like A plus in everything. You need an understanding of mathematics, but it's more of aptitude, you know what I mean? You, 
it's more analytic skills. You need logical thinking, that is it. You know, code is logic. If A equal B, then C will be this, you know, that's just writing code. So these are some of the kinds of skills you need to go. But again, like I said, it depends on the area you're in. If you are doing analysis stuff, you need different kinds of skills. If you are doing design, you know, you are building the architecture, writing databases, writing functional design, you need different kinds of skills to do that. If you, if you are, if you are, if you are, um, if you're doing a, if you're a project manager, you need more people skills than anything. You know, you need more organization skills than anything else. If we can go back to the slides, it would be great. <laughs> then, uh, yeah. So what does anybody see so far until the next slide comes on? In the next slide, I'm going to be talking about some of the areas of gaps in Nigeria that you can plug yourself in. Yeah. That you can plug yourself into. What does anybody say so far? Sorry, I'm trying Drop to your questions. Drop your questions. Okay. So in Nigeria, what we've discovered, I'll just talk, what we've discovered in Nigeria is um, there are some specific, in, in software development in Nigeria is still growing. I know in the last few years, um, there's a lot of things that people are going to coding boot camp, they are doing all of these things. But a lot of the things we've seen is that a lot of focus is on the front end type skills and the skills required to build robust software applications. Hello, the skills required to build a robust software applications are sometimes um, missing. So for example, in Nigeria, we need a lot of business analysts. We don't have a lot of, a lot of business uh, analyst type people that go in and they build stuff uh, and they can actually gather requirements from, from clients. Even if you are using third parties, like you are going and you're using um, foreign developed software or you're getting foreigners to come and build, uh, you still need to have even in-house business analysts that understand what your organization wants. And you're not just depending on people to define for you what you should want. That's why we find in Nigeria, a lot of the software that is built is not fit for purpose because people are building, um, people are not really capturing user requirements to know what they want, you know, so that's an issue. So go to the next slide. Thank you. Yes. Uh -huh. Thanks. So, so, so people are not really capturing that. So business, we need a lot of business analysts for people that are not inclined towards Hello, for people that are not inclined towards coding, writing code, then analysis and you are and you've got like good analytic skills, you like to mingle with people, talk to people, you know, analysis is a good area. Again, we don't have a lot of system designers in Nigeria as well, which is another crucial area in software development, but it's really lagging in Nigeria. We need people that not just can do the front end graphic uh, UI uh, user interface type stuff, but you need people that can do architecture, you know, that can write business rules. Because for anything, if you are building, say, for a financial application or any kind of, you know, application really, you need to, every business has a rule. You need people that can capture these rules, automate these rules. You need people that know how uh, it will interface with databases, you know, and things like that. So we need designers. Uh, I've talked about, I think I've just touched on solutions architecture. It's an area that is lagging in this country as well. In Nigeria, we don't have a lot of specialist testers. Testing is crucial, crucial. Testing and QA people. So it's an area you can plug yourself in. Uh, but you need to understand, you know, it's, it's a technical area as well. It's not, it's not soft. Uh, we don't have a lot of database people. Database administrators, as in people that manage a database on a day-to-day -day basis, um, but also people that will build database applications. You know, if you have a, co a customer database, it's a database. We need people that can build good things like that. Databases plug into um, wider applications. So it's an area of um, uh, that we're lagging behind. It's an area of gap in this country you can plug yourself into. We don't have a lot of application support and maintenance people as well. That's when the application has already been built, then they go there. What uh, we found, for example, um, if you go into a lot of large organizations in Nigeria, they don't, have, they don't have app support people. They use people that do IT support, IT um, 
uh, and IT network support to, uh, to fix um, application problems, which is wrong, you know. Uh, you know, like IT, software development is a subset of the larger IT. You have networks, you have other things, you know. So a person that is fixing cables, networks, joining it together, or someone that is doing telecoms, they cannot fix, they are not application people. So we don't have a lot of application people, specialized application people in Nigeria. It's an area that we're really lagging behind in this country. And then project managers that specialize in project management. I, I see a lot of people learning, um, well, I used to, you know, see a lot of people learning um, PRINCE 2. Now, PRINCE 2, whilst it's good, PRINCE just means Projects in Controlled Environments. It's an acronym. We need more agile type people in our environment because our environment is not really organized in that sense, you know. You need people that can respond sharply. So agile uh, development and agile management is, is kind of a little bit different and it's more suited to our environment. So we need more agile type people in our environment. We need technical writers, you know. We'll build, in, my, in my company, iBase, we build websites for people. And a lot of times people will come and say, ah, do the content for us. And I always say to people, I can't do your content for you. You have to do your content yourself. Um, because me being a technical person, if you if you if you are a fashion designer, for example, and you say to me, build build a website for me and put the content, I don't know nothing. I mean, I have some ideas about fashion, but I really don't know nothing about fashion or your business. So you really need to do, but you need people that can craft content in a way that uh, the end user wants to see and you need some people are specialized in that so we need people that can do that as well so those are some areas you can think about and think about plugging yourself because the other you know as we go along and more and more people are using tech in nigeria but also all over the world you know these are some areas you can really plug yourself in now when you talk about if you come to salaries again a person that does uh, programming that writes code you know, does not earn more than a person that does testing or an, a business analyst or that, you know, or a project manager. A project manager would be the highest earner, to be honest, in, in, in the old thing and, and stuff like that. So whatever area, a test that I saw specialized, they earn a lot of good money all over the world. So if you get yourself plugged into one of these areas, you know, I mean, you build a good career for yourself all, anywhere in the world. If you do it in Nigeria, where some of these skills are lagging, and you can plug yourself to some to a lot of the companies out there. Then um, it's um, you 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 will not regret it. That kind of thing. So I've come to the end of my brief presentation. I didn't want to go too much because I had a lot of content and I had to try and break it, scale it down. Do you have any questions for me? And I I hope I didn't exceed thirty minutes. I'm just looking at the time. Do you have a, do you have any questions for me? Thank you very much. <laughs> we have um, spent a lot of time, but it was worthwhile. It's worth it. I enjoyed your presentation, and I believe everyone did too. Thank so you. Um, it's time for questions and answers. Um, if you would prefer you speak, you ask your question directly, just raise your hand and then we will call upon you. If not, please drop your question in the chat box so that we can read it out. Thank you. Any questions? Or you can just tell me what you enjoyed most about the presentation, or if there's any area that you want me to clarify. Yeah, Adenike is raising up her hand, please. Um, you Adenike. can go ahead and ask your question. Okay. Please. Okay, Adenike Baker. Okay. Um, okay, good afternoon. Hi. I would like to thank you for this presentation. I think for me, I have been looking at um, the various opportunities available within the software development like that. So um, 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 I want to confirm or beyond, okay, I work out, I work presently as an analyst, a business analyst. In, in yeah, a business way. analyst, okay. I can't hear too much. That's why I'm just train, straining a little bit. Okay. Oh, okay. I said I work presently as a business analyst. Okay. Then it leads to, solution architecture 
in, um, in where? So, um, Ichiba. Okay, sorry, yeah. So I'll, well, I just started out. So I'd like to confirm beyond the analytical skills, yes. um, I'd like to confirm the other skills and maybe courses you would recommend for somebody okay. looking to go into that area. Then I also want to do a master's program, but I've been trying to look at maybe possible courses I can do. But for the role, I enjoy that role. So it's something that I would like to do the career in. Yes. Business analysis is very interesting. The course that comes to we actually in we actually do a business analysis um, training course actually it's five days. Um, the course there's a so you can come to our one and we'll show you everything we need to do. One of my partners is a very senior business analyst. You know what I mean and uh, gone through everything. There are a few quality. In fact, let me pull some up. I will just tell you. Tell you. Uh, so many courses you can do. Give me one second. I just want, let me tell you, so I'm not talking from the back of uh, the top of my head. So many courses you can try and get involved in. And you can, how long did you say you've been doing it? Um, in the IT role, um, one year, but outside the IT role, maybe other units, like two, three years, but actively in IT one year. Okay, let me show you what we do in our one. Sorry, I'm taking time. You know, like I said, I was ill. I'm ill. <laughs> uh, okay. So basically, like, what we'll do. I, uh, in our course, we go through So like there's the International Institute of Business Analysis, yeah? So that's the key professional body. It, it's called, there's a business analysis body of knowledge. It's called BABOK, B-A-B-O-K, yeah? So that is the, that's the international standard. You can go and um, Google it. So they'll produce all these things and they have this International Institute of Business Analysts, which we're kind of a part of. So like, for example, in our course, we'll go through planning, mentoring, how you do requirements, gathering, enterprise analysis, solution and blah, blah, and all that stuff, case studies, you know, flow diagrams, yeah, you, know, you do a lot of all of that, prototyping. So, so we go through all of that, but go through, that is the international standard, the BABOK. So if you Google that, then it will tell you everything you need to know. If you want to get started, to get a foundation before you think of um, your, uh, if you want to go for like masters or anything kind of thing like that, you can attend our course and we take through rigorous um, a, a training for that one for five days and you'll come out as a qualified person. Nike, is that okay? Adenike? Yes, please. But I have, do you know about the BCS, um, Business Analysis Practitioner? BCS, B uh, British Computer Society. So BCS, they do the IC, ISEB, this is an acronym again. Yeah, I'm a member of BCS. Um, yes, I know about it. <laughs> okay, they have a business um, analysis practice for that. Yes, yes. Hello? Okay, I'm listening. Yes, I, yes, they do. So they for do. the, I don't know if you know about the one you recommend, the IID or the it's it, B, BCS, I think they follow ICED, I-S-E-D. You can Google it, just put it in Google and it will come out, you know. So yes, I do know about them. Okay, thank you. I didn't care. I okay, think sorry, if you well, have any I'm other not... question to ask, um, maybe you can just drop it on the, at the, uh, in the chat box while we respond to that to allow for other um, answers to the questions we have on the chat room. Okay, all right. Thank you, thank you okay. very much. So, There's so uh, much Olufumilayo, you say you have no knowledge and want to be a part of it, but what would you want to be a part of? Olufumilayo can I respond to this. Okay, I think she, 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 she was... Okay, she dropped out. Okay. Um, 
her network is in fact she just joined back she would respond to maybe we'll okay, ask her the question uh, is there any other question there yes um okay. i can so, see someone okay, saying that someone starting from scratch so that's what i want to, i'm like in what area do you just want to know about everything generally or or do you want to um know something specific so let me know then i can clarify uh adeyemi can somebody learn coding easily yes somebody can learn coding easily but it depends on what kind of you know like i said there are so many coding languages um if you want to be a front-end developer and you want to can you put the slide that um, i did front-end versus back-end front-end versus back-end skills yeah so if you want to say you want to be a web developer and uh, you just want to learn html uh, uh, css you know those are quite easier to learn you can do that very easily it's when the back-end skills are the ones that are more are more difficult The backend skills are the ones that are more difficult. So, um, <laughs> so if you go back to the bits about, yes, uh -huh. so so the front end skills are easier to learn. Adeyemi, uh, you know, uh, the back end ones. So it depends on what you want to do. If you want to build, it's quite funny in the industry. A lot of people that do back end, you know. Yeah, like they look down. People that do back end typically don't do front end because they are so just different. Uh, front end HTML is very easy to learn, very, very easy. Um, uh, the back end ones are a little bit more difficult. So that's, that's, uh, does, I don't know if that answers it. So if you want to learn, the place to start will be HTML. Then you build your way up from there. Yeah. For a career in business analysis if you were to recommend master's program oh adenike i don't know which one to i'll tell you what i did my master's in um, information systems at brunel university in the uk now my course covered a lot of things yeah including analysis so i don't know if there is a specific master's degree program specifically for business analysis but i did mine so i trained to manage information systems, which is, you know, and technology. Um, I can say I trained to be a project manager, but in my course, we did business analysis as well. And then you just do all these courses and you learn from there. I, I don't know if that answers. Olufumilayo, you say you don't like coding because it's difficult. Coding is not difficult. Coding is, um, is logic, <laughs> you know? So there's this myth that is mathematics and people think mathematics is difficult. But well, that's not true. But however, you don't have to like it. Me personally, design is my favorite. I love doing design, not, not the front side of the design, but I, I like doing not i.e. physical, not physical. I like logical design. I like to do the business rules. I like to know, you know what I mean? So that's my favorite area. And, and I think that's the best area of software design. So if you're interested in that, uh, you could you could go for that and then we can talk offline about how you might want to get started in that. Uh, Adenike, now we're doing career management. Yeah, University of Warwick. You can you can go to, I will look at um, e-business at University of Warwick. I've not checked that one out. I finished my master's in 2001, you know, so I don't check all these things out. So <laughs> 2001 is 19 years ago. So I don't know about all of that. You are a PHP developer, Fowers. So um, when you be start a course and learn about, we start with HTML. Okay, so that's so Adeyemi. He's told you when you be start, you start with the front end stuff. So that's what he's saying. What's the what is the programming needed for API? And is API needed in? Uh, I think this is an incorrect question. Yeah. Um, in fact, maybe Fowers will answer that question for you. Uh, it's API needed in IoT. So I think this is an incorrect question. Tolu Lokwe, I think that is an incorrect question. What are you actually trying to get at? How, uh, uh, Mumina, okay, my mentee, Mumina, how deep can I go in UX and UI and how do you start learning? User experience and user interface. You can go as deep as you want to, yeah? 
uh, uh, the, the person that asked Tolulokwe, Fawaz has answered your question for you. That's why I'm like, I think your question was incorrect because you need to rephrase your question. Oreolu, or, Oreoluwa, Ms. Ore has uh, talked to you about MLP as a master's in analysis and design. Adenike, so LSE does a master's program in um, analysis and design of information systems. Okay, which she did. So you can try that one. So we've given you some options. You can check out the Warwick one. I will check that one out. You can do LSE and you can go to my alma mater, which is Brunel, or you can go to uh, Ores alma mater, which is LSE. So check all of these ones out. So look, where you are trying to see a project towards API. Huh? You're trying to see a project towards API. I don't understand that. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. Can you be? Um, can you make your question? Uh, maybe you clear the question, bro. You explain it so that I can understand. Okay, you, well. you can speak. So respond to your question. Okay, Fowers okay, understands. Fowers say, okay. you understand her question. Her. Yes. Unmute yourself, and Fowers will answer you. Okay, thank you very much. I'm so so for the privilege given to me. Um, a friend told me about. I was looking towards the soil team programming language and it gave me the best option using an API. So that's why I brought out the question here. Yeah. Thank Sorry, you. Sorry, the question because you cut off a little bit. I think your network went a bit funny for two seconds. What's the question? I said a um, friend advised me to go into API, like learning the um, building of API from programming language based on my interest in doing the soil regularities and temperatures, PHP. Sorry, like sorry please. Can I come in? This power is on. Okay, yes, Fawaz. Yes, Fawaz, let us so, finish our question, then you can answer it. Let her finish okay, first. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. So, look, please continue. Is she gone? Okay, continue, yes. Building a program language, I should make use of API in knowing the soil regularities, like the soil pH, temperature, if it's favorable for plants or agriculture. They're about something um and um and appealing to agriculture so that's why i asked that is api I needed for iot and how much is api being used that's why i asked thank you yeah, i see so Fawaz, what did you want to say so what i'm trying to say is that we're gonna to me, to me. what i'm trying to say to you with your program your, like your application maybe what an API does is that, like now, you want, let's say you want to get a score for a particular, from a particular website. Like, let's say you build a website now, it's called Live Score. So you are now trying to get that, okay, me, I don't want to design, I don't need a server to like design for, to get my own score from a server. So instead, I use an API to get from a particular website. That's what the API do, you connect, you communicate with the second website and get your results from that particular website. That's what an API does. Okay. Like now I want to like now let's say you want to know maybe you want to make payments. There's what they call Paystack API. You want to use Paystack yeah. API, you want to make a payment. Like there's a particular set of code you get to use that particular API. Okay. Let's say you get an e-commerce website now, you click on okay, I want to buy this particular bag. But immediately you click on that bag, it's taking you to Paystack. Okay, okay. Let me explain it. Let me explain. Um, right. API means application program interface. So basically it's an interface that connects one application to another application by passing a lot of uh, things. So Fawaz has explained, yeah. So for example, you want to connect, you want to start using Paystack Payments um, uh, uh, Gateway. The easiest way to connect to Paystack would be to use an API. Paystack would have, would have developed a code their, their programmers, which they will give to you, that will be the API that you will integrate into your own application and it will connect you to them seamlessly. Then you can make that whatever transaction it is you want to make. Yeah. So you're building a soil to look up, you are building a soil management.
management system or something, you know? So basically, um, I'm not quite sure, but if you want to build the API, I just, if you have an application, that API just connects two things together. So maybe for your soil management application, you're trying to connect that to something else to get some kind of information, you need an API to be built. So whether it's you that will build it or I don't know, but I think we need to have further discussions. I still feel, you know, your question was just an incorrect understanding or phrasing of the question. Then uh, we can sort it out. But API is just um, it's an interface, application program interface that co that connects one application to another application. I don't know. Hopefully that um, makes sense for there. The API will be for soil management. So we'll take that yeah. one offline. Thank you yeah. for that. If yeah. you have, um, maybe if you are not clear enough, maybe you can just uh, reach out yeah. after the program to be clear yeah. with what you want to understand. Thank okay. you. I think I did um, share what dropped a message. She said, please all said well, but how can someone go about learning and acquiring necessary skills? Which skill. part, which skill do you mean here to look up with? Abi, I think you're right. Okay. Are you there? Okay. Best out of all. Which is the best one out of all? All of them are good in their own uniquely different way. None is better than the other. They all work. Software development is teamwork. You have a team of people that come together to, to deliver to uh, a goal, to achieve a goal, to deliver an application, you know? So each one, one does not work. You, you see, as I've said, a business analyst needs to work with a coder. They need to work with a tester. They need to work with people that do application support at the end of it. So it's not a standalone thing. So no one is the best out of all. It depends on your interest. Some people prefer business analysis, uh, analysis because you know they are gifted in that area. Some people prefer to code because that's their thing, that they're gifted in that area. Some people prefer to manage other people, they are gifted in that area. Which one of them, you know, do you want? Then you can focus your energies on that one. You can also look at opportunities. Where will, which one will favor me in Nigeria? Or if you want to go to Canada, which one will favor you in Canada? You know what I mean? So you, you oh, business analysis. <laughs> You want to be a business. So what was the question to business analysis? What would you need to learn for business analysis? It's the same thing you talk to. We'll form a business analysis club with Adenike Baker, and then we'll talk everything you need to know about analysis and come and attend our five-day courses where we'll teach you. We'll give you a good foundation to start you off. Any other questions? Okay, let me, so you guys, if you want to reach me, I think I've got my contact details. Uh -huh. I've got my contact details. So we can talk offline at a later date. Um, drop me a line, you know, thank you so much for listening to me. I felt I went to, everything is huge. So to compress everything into 30 seconds was a little bit um, <laughs> challenging, but I did my best. So you can drop me a line um, and we can we can talk a little bit more and, and take things forward, you know, from there. So thank you so much for having me. You guys be safe out there. COVID-19 is real, you know, um, people are catching it and uh, don't, don't, um, don't take it for granted at all. Thank you, Abiola. Yeah, thank thank you, you very much, Omar, for a wonderful presentation. And I think a lot of people, we learned a lot today. And um, yeah. if you have any questions or you need a clarification on anything, please, uh, you can reach out on the slide. You can see her information, her contact details on the screen. Just copy and then you can reach out to her on that. Thank you very much. I personally have learned a lot. You've mentioned a lot of career paths, career opportunities, over close to a hundred. I tried to list them down, but um, <laughs> I couldn't list everything. <laughs> yes. Somebody was asking if we would be sharing the slide with them. Okay. That, um, you, can, you can share it if you want to, actually. You can share it, yes.
Okay. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. For those who are interested, okay, we'll try and check everyone who took part in them. Um, who registered to take part in the webinar. So you can just um, take your time to read and get more information about what she had said so far. Yeah. Thank you very much Thank for you. being part of this program today. Thank you. And yeah, I appreciate yeah. our guest speaker for taking out time, despite the fact that um, she isn't feeling too well. We really appreciate that. Um, Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I don't know if we have any other thing to say before we put an end to the session. Au revoir. If I all said both, her both and your lines for the WhatsApp. The number, on the contact, the number on the contact, the mobile number is on WhatsApp. The other one is a landline, so the one of them will be a WhatsApp number. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for being part of this program. And now, as we all know, okay, not all of us because I can see new faces today. We have a mental health webinar every month, which this one is one of it. We had a Miriam, she is part of the part and um, the attendees for today. She was the one who spoke to us the last time. So we have this every month. Hopefully next month we'll be having another webinar and um, please stay tuned. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, we are um, the Beauty of Women's Technology Empowerment Center. Um, my colleague will be sharing our social media handle in the chat box so that you can reach us, reach out to us through those social media handles. Um, that will be that for today. Thank you for being part of this and have a wonderful day. Okay.